This week you'll get an inside view on the RHA fall freakout and the Wisconsin Congressional debate. All this and more coming up on SPTV News. And now Melitza Mitrovic in her second year with SPTV News. Good evening, Stevens Point. In Campus News this week, the Residence Hall Association held Fall Freakout this week. SPTV's Emily Mar Morganson has more. The Residence Hall Association partnered with the National Residence Hall Honorary, hosted the second annual Fall Freakout last week, and included some new activities for residents and staff members to enjoy. Basically, we wanted something more than just what we already do. It's something that's kind of in the middle of um, our bigger programs, something to kind of fill in the fall time. And we thought of it, we wanted it to be kind of a spooky time, but also a time for the halls to kind of just get together, not really a competition. The week started out a little spooky with the 5K zombie run. Runners wearing flag football belts had to run the 5K while dodging ghoulish brain-eating zombies. If the runner's belts were taken, a doctor who asked questions about alcohol awareness could revive them if they answered correctly. The freakout continued with the first ever Fall Harvest Fest. This program actually is our first one, so Harvest Fest is the first year that we're putting it on. We normally ask another organization to kind of step in and kind of do another filler event. So basically, NRHH decided to step in and help out, so we're doing Harvest Fest. Um, we have pumpkin bowling, pie eating contests, ring toss, um, lots of fun shenanigans going on. <laughs> Other activities during the week included All Hallows Rave, complete with costume contests and the haunted corn maze. I think the plans for next year are just kind of continuing it. I mean, I know that people enjoy it as far as like the contests for costumes, as far as the whole Halloween ball we always have every year. RHA hopes to plan bigger and better things for the next fall freakout. This has been Emily Margeson for SPTV News. Tomorrow, the featured event is a bus trip to a haunted core maze. If you would like to attend, meet at the DeBoe Circle bus pickup at 6.45 p.m. Another frightful event on campus will occur tonight. The UWSP Filmmakers Club is hosting a Halloween short films festival. All of the films created by the UWSP community members will be shown in the library on campus on the sixth floor at 8 p.m. Everyone is invited to attend the event. It is sure to be a scary night filled with creative films. Another Halloween event will occur on campus with the Pointer Athletes. On Sunday, November 2nd, all children with adult supervision are invited to the MAC here on campus for a fall festival. There will be pumpkin decorating, face painting, mummy wraps, and much more. This event will be from 3 to 5 p.m. in the MAC. In local news this week, the UWSB Positive Psychology students will be hosting a three-on-three -three basketball tournament. The three-on-three -three tournament will be on November 23rd at the Quant Gym. The tournament is for all men and women over the age of 18. The deadline to register is November 17th. The students hope to bring positive vibes to the community by donating all the money made at the tournament to the Portage County Boys and Girls Club. UWSP will be the host for the third U.S. Congressional Candidate Debate tonight at 7 p.m. in the Laird Room. The debate will be between Ron Kine and Tony Kurtz. The debate will be moderated by Wisconsin Public Radio's Glenn Morberg. The candidates will also answer questions from a panel of reporters and editors from newspapers and television stations in the area. This event is free to the public. This week in national news, the wreckage of a second World War plane that disappeared roughly 70 years ago is being hauled out of Ontario's Lake Muskoko this week. Frederick Pepin has more. There it is, one of the first pieces of the Northrop A-17 Nomad aircraft that plunged into Muskoka Lake in 1940. And I was surprised to see that it was in such perfect shape. Uh, with this. We could still read the, the 
the number 3521 on the on the fuselage of uh, the aircraft. It's, uh, it's amazing to see. The operations manager, Major Jan Kennedy, also got choked up when she saw the identification of this plane that has been lost for 74 years. It was an extremely emotional event. For her and for all the military personnel on site, these pieces remind them that two of their own perished here. On December 13th, 1940, two of these Northrop A-17 crashed as they were conducting a search and rescue mission. The wreckage of the first airplane and the bodies of the pilots were discovered shortly after on the ice of the lake. But the Nomad 3521 was never found until 2012. The bodies of Lieutenant Peter Campbell and leading aircraftsman Theodore Bates were then returned to their families. The operation here on Lake Muskoka is going real quick. The cockpit, one of the wings, and now the tail of the plane has just been brought to the surface. When we bring it back to the surface, we want to make sure that it's done properly and we don't raise the aircraft too fast uh, because we don't want it to break. Once all the pieces will have been brought to the surface, the wreckage will be delivered to the National Air Force Museum of Canada in Trenton. They will either work to restore it or they will create a display showing it as is. This plane would have never been found without Matt Fairbrass's determination. He created the Lost Airmen of Muskoka project, and with the help of his friends and underwater radar, he located the crash site. Yeah, it's emotional. And he's not the only one who feels this way. The mystery of the Nomad 3521 has been haunting the region for decades. And after what had happened in, uh, in, in Ottawa, yeah, this is still remembrance. Um, and they never give up looking. For him, this is a perfect example of military brotherhood, showing that no one goes forgotten, even 74 years later. Frédéric Pepin, CBC News, Gravenhurst, Ontario. It's amazing that people can still find pieces of history after so many years. A river of molten lava is bearing down the town of Paho on Hawaii's Big Island reaching the properties of two homes nearest to the Kalu volcano, the lava advancing between 5 and 20 yards per hour. CNN's Martin Savage has more. The day residents have been fearing is finally here. The town of Pahoa is burning. A 2,000-degree river of molten lava that's been approaching for months is now searing the town. And it's just the beginning. Overnight, the first official evacuation notices went out. Face to face, knock on the door by a public safety official. The lava is moving at about 30 feet an hour, and at its current speed, it will cut the town's main street in less than two days. In a helicopter, I could follow the trail of destruction from the slopes of the Kilauea volcano to the edge of town. There it is. That's the lava field. And most of this lava is moving underground. You can see how it transforms the landscape. It just wipes out the vegetation. On its way, the lava invaded a local cemetery surrounding the white tombstones. There's nothing that can be done. In other words, if you're thinking, why don't they divert it or why don't they try to dig a channel to go around the town? Hawaii's tried all that in the past. It's never been effective. On the ground, crews race to construct new roads around the lava to keep an evacuation route open and businesses connected to the nearby city of Hilo. Hopefully we'll be able to always stay open. Hopefully Pahoa will still be viable. Even as the danger creeps ever closer, some residents say they will stay, if only to watch their homes burn. When the lava flow comes through their subdivision or through their area, there will be an opportunity for them to remain on site provided it's safe to do so. The flow edging closer as officials are powerless to divert or stop its path, and the remaining residents are on high alert. Ten-year-old McCall Stewart has reported to be shot in her home while watching a Royals game on television. KCTV has more. Yes, we're still broadcasting live here at Forest Grove Baptist Church. We got the 12-hour call for justice to support little McColl. As the family plans how to say goodbye to McColl Stewart in their church, the community pulls together, searching for answers. We're still taking those tips. Ten-year-old Coco was killed in a drive-by shooting Sunday. She was watching the Royals game with her family when someone started shooting at the home at 15th and New Jersey. A frightened Coco tried to run to the back room and was shot in the head. Her killer is still on the streets. Just outside the church, friends stood close by with open arms. She grew up with my babies, man. Crescinda, a close family friend and neighbor, knew Coco since the day she was born. 
I love her like she mine. I love her like she one of my babies. I treat her, I'm protect her like she one of my babies. She's struggling, knowing the vibrant little girl who loved making others smile is gone. The fact that our children are being murdered, that should really rattle your soul. Crescinda says it's going to take more than radio announcements and community support to stop the senseless violence on our streets. It starts at home. If you don't teach them at home, what the streets gonna teach them? The services for Stewart are still pending. Well, that wraps up news for the week. Stay tuned. You're watching SPTV here on Channel 983 on Charter. Serving a campus of 9,600 strong, we are the home of UWSP Television. We are SPTV. You can find us on Charter Channel 983, online, or on any of our social media sites. How can you get involved with student media at UWSP? Connecting with your campus television station, SBTV, is easy. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Vine, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Pinterest, follow us on Instagram, or connect with us on Google+. But of course, the best way for you to get involved and stay up to date with all that is happening at our station is to stop by our studio. We're located in the Communication Arts Center at UWSP, Studio B, Room 121. You can also drop by our office, Room 130, for more information on station happenings. We can't wait to get you involved. Come join us at SPTV. Let's make media together. This public service announcement is brought to you by SPTV. Hi, my name is Julia Flaherty. I've been living with juvenile diabetes for more than half of my life. I realized fairly early on in my diagnosis that this was an opportunity for me to take responsibility to draw awareness about a disease that, according to JDRF.org, affects almost 3 million Americans today. November is National Diabetes Awareness Month. That's why I'm asking you to tweet me at Ms. Tren Shi on Twitter to tell me how you are going to help the world be diabetes free. This disease is not curable. It is treatable. But for some people, that doesn't make it any less tolerable. Whether you have juvenile diabetes, know someone that does, or are just inspired to learn more about it, the month of November gives you a great opportunity to start. Don't push disease to invisibility. Set it free. This public service announcement is not affiliated with JDRF.org. This has been an SPTV production. Together, we strive to make media with UWSP students. Hi, I'm Laura Braun, the General Manager at SPTV. I'm a Stevens Point native and want to make sure that we're providing you with the best local coverage of all the news, sports, and entertainment as we possibly can. If you have any questions or comments about our organization, feel free to email us or stop by our offices. We're located in the Communication Arts Center at the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point and can't wait to meet you because today we can make media together. Having trouble getting that first date? Ever wonder if soulmates are real? All your burning love questions can now be answered on SPTV's newest show, The Love Doctor. Join The Love Doctor herself, Michaela Hilgard, as she diagnoses UW Stevens Point's love problems. Whether it's an epidemic of shyness or a case of mixed signals, The Love Doctor is here with the cure.
And now Justin Pomplin in his third year with your SPTV Sports. Welcome back. In Pointer Sports, this past weekend the Pointers football team took on UW Lacrosse in a WIAC conference battle. The Pointers were looking to get back on track after a tough loss the week prior to UW Platteville, and they did just that. It wasn't an easy win for the Pointers, however, as they won the game 24-17 in a game that was about as tough as it gets. The Pointers once again were down at the half 17-10, but were able to once again rebound in the second half as they scored 14 unanswered points to win from behind. The Pointers' next game is this Saturday against UW Oshkosh at 1 p.m. Curtis Rowan and Adam Yurkowski will have the call, so be sure to tune in to the SPTV Live Sports broadcast. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of year again. Pointers hockey is back in full swing. Both the men's and women's teams are highly ranked as the guys come in at number two in the preseason poll and the girls come in at number seven. Hopes are high for both teams as they return a lot of experience on the ice. The men's team in particular has only lost four seniors from last year and they look to start things off with a bang this year against Finlandia this Saturday at 7 p.m. After making it to the title game last year, it seems like the sky is the limit for Coach Brooks and that bunch. And it will be exciting to see how it all plays out. For the women, they come in at number seven and look to make an intense title run this year. There is a lot of hope for this team, and they start the season off on the road at St. Olaf as they have a doubleheader playing both Friday and Saturday nights. Now on to some NFL news. The Packers had a huge matchup last weekend against a struggling New Orleans Saints team. The Saints did not struggle though in prime time, however, as they absolutely routed the Packers 44 to 23. It was a game that featured two high-flying offenses and the only question was which defense would step up under the lights and stop their opponents. The Saints rose to the challenge as the Packers' measly defense sunk in the water. The Saints threw all over the Packers as Drew Brees looked to be back to his old self after a rough start to the season. Aaron Rodgers looked pretty good for most of the night despite two interceptions that weren't his fault, but he did strain his hamstring as well. The injury occurred after, after the injury occurred, Rodgers just didn't look to be himself. He still played efficiently, but was unable to do so to get the job done. Eddie Lacy also ran the ball well, but ultimately was not as good as Mark Ingram of the Saints. The question of the year for the Packers has been whether or not this defense would rise to the occasion this year, and after playing a tough offense for once, they showed their true colors, especially as far as the run defense is concerned. With the Packers falling to 5-3 and three on the year, they now go into their bye week. Packers have a very pivotal game coming up as they play the Bears on Sunday Night Football. It'll be interesting to see if they can rebound coming off the bye. In national sports this week, CNN's Andy Scholl speaks to Charles Barkley, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kenny the Jet Smith about key NBA storylines of the upcoming NBA season. Let's take a look. Now that he's back home, they, they love him again. They put his witness sign back up on the building. So His legacy is already intact. That's there. But I think if he could win in Cleveland, I think that I add a, a special page to his legacy book. They got some tough competition. The Chicago Bulls, in my opinion, may be the best team in the Eastern Conference. And Cleveland's not a clear-cut uh, front run in the East. Chicago's loaded. If Derrick Rose is healthy, uh, they're probably the team to beat in the Eastern Conference. What's your take on the Western Conference? It's as tough as ever. Yeah, I mean, the West uh, from one to eight, uh, anyone you wouldn't be surprised if Dallas is in the Western Conference Finals. You wouldn't be surprised if the Clippers are in the Western Conference Finals. You wouldn't be surprised if even the Rockets, uh, you know, are in the Western Conference Finals. There's so many teams uh, from top to bottom um, that could not only shock, but claim they could possibly win it all. The Lakers are not going to make the playoffs. Uh, listen, Father Time is undefeated. You can't outwork for all the time. We all retired. I would like to be playing. You see how much money these guys making today? There's a reason, you know, Bill Russell wants his product to still be playing today, you know, uh, but we all retire because we get old. And Kobe's an amazing player, uh, but for all the time is undefeated. It will be interesting to see what teams come out on top this year. That's all we have for sports for tonight. Make sure to check out Final Take on Demand on YouTube and uh, our SPTV website. After the break, Ashley Homer will give us the latest in entertainment news. SPTV is your home for everything pointers, only on Charter Channel 983. Serving a campus of 9,600 strong, 
We are the home of UWSP Television. We are SPTV. You can find us on Charter Channel 983, online, or on any of our social media sites. My name is Julia Flaherty. I'm the current promotions director at SBTV. My job allows for me to have a lot of personal creative direction because that is the team environment that we instill here at SBTV. This past summer, I had the opportunity to write for HerCampus.com as well as the DailyQuirk.com. Personally, I feel that being involved with SBTV has really helped boost my confidence and my ability to network with other students. If Student media is something that interests you, and even if you're not really sure what student media means, you should stop by our studios. We are looking forward to having you involved this year, and we cannot wait to make media with you. Hey you! Are you creative? Do you like television? Would you like to make a show that appears on air? Then SBTV is the place for you! At SBTV, you can appear on air, learn how to shoot and edit video, write and produce your own show, and most importantly, gain skills and experiences that will last a lifetime. Want to join us at SBTV? Come check us out in the Communication Arts Center rooms 121 and 130. We'd love to meet you. SBTV, let's make media together. The Love Doctor is in. Watch SBTV's new series featuring college dating advice, love confessions, and more. Michaela Hilgert is The Love Doctor. Watch the new series premiering this fall on SBTV Charter Channel 983. And now Ashley Holmer in her third year with your SBTV Entertainment. Welcome back. A Houston woman says a man pretending to be the movie actor and director, Tyler Perry, tried to scam her out of $2,000. Jennifer Murphy says it all started with a post on Facebook. Murphy says she shared on the social media website that she and her family were going to be evicted from their home. That's when the scammer allegedly offered Murphy a place to stay in Atlanta if she, couldn't, if she could come up with $2,000. Murphy declined the offer and removed her Facebook message, but that didn't stop the man's request for cash. Murphy says she was only asking for prayers. Now she wants everyone to know about the scam. A new music video by the American band OK Go has gone viral. The band is famous for their videos with optical illusions and domino effects. CNN's Will Ripley got a closer look at the creative process. Would you believe this nondescript Tokyo building is home to the creative mind of one of the hottest viral music videos around? And we're going to get a look inside his studio. This is Japanese director Morihiro Harano. He's friends with the American group OK Go. Those are the guys that use treadmills, dominoes, and other optical illusions in their other videos. But in this new one, which they shot right here in Japan, they use drones and they use these new Segway-like Honda vehicles called Unicubs. Take a look. This video already has millions of views and the number keeps rising. And would you believe it's essentially one continuous shot? They did 44 takes. They completed the whole thing 11 times and out of those 11, they found three takes that they thought were okay. And the one that you see on YouTube is what they consider their best take. Filming took place over four days. It was actually raining a lot of the time, so that extended the time period of shooting. This is after they rehearsed for a full month. The final take, we're told, happened around 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening, and you see 2,400 people doing a really cool flip card type maneuver as the drone keeps rising. The director actually says this is his favorite part. Here's why. 
The end is my favorite, he says, because the drone flies up 700 meters, about a half a mile, and the music just stops. You see that huge crowd. He says, this is my first music video, and I wanted to try something new. They used a multi-copter camera to get those incredible aerials, and they shot everything at half speed. Everyone was moving in slow motion, and then they sped it up in the final editing process to get that incredible effect. One of the world's hottest viral music videos made right here in Japan. Will Ripley, CNN, Tokyo. OK Go's new video is shot in one take using a specialized drone and Segway-like vehicle. Joan Rivers' daughter has hired a New York-based law firm to look into her mother's death. The firm tells USA Today Melissa Rivers asked them to determine the facts and circumstances surrounding the medical procedure that led to her mother's death. Joan Rivers, Rivers went into cardiac arrest during a throat procedure at Manhattan's Yorkville Endoscopy, Endoscopy Clinic in late August. She died on September 4th. Earlier this month, the medical examiner ruled Rivers' death of complications from low blood oxygen. Well, that's all we have for entertainment news this week. Lifestyle when we return. These guys care about sports. The talk continues after the cameras stop rolling. Watch Final Take only right here on SPTV for anything pointers, anything sports. This public service announcement is brought to you by SPTV. Hi, my name is Julia Flaherty. I have been living with juvenile diabetes for more than half of my life. I realized fairly early on in my diagnosis that this was an opportunity for me to take responsibility to draw awareness about a disease that, according to JDRF.org, affects almost 3 million Americans today. November is National Diabetes Awareness Month. That's why I'm asking you to tweet me at Ms. Trenchy on Twitter to tell me how you are going to help the world be diabetes free. This disease is not curable. It is treatable. But for some people, that doesn't make it any less tolerable. Whether you have juvenile diabetes, know someone that does, or are just inspired to learn more about it, the month of November gives you a great opportunity to start. Don't push disease to invisibility. Set it free. This public service announcement is not affiliated with JDRF.org. This has been an SPTV production. Together, we strive to make media with UWSP students. My name is Lance Castor. I graduated from UW Stevens Point in 2014. I started at SPTV my junior year. I was looking for a fun experience that also provided me with a chance to learn something, and SPTV was the place to come. Right now, I'm employed at WFRV TV, the CBS affiliate located in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I, I can handle it because of what I was able to learn here at SPTV. You can be as creative as you want here. The only limits are those that you put on yourself. Those limits are the Welcome back. This week for our lifestyle section, we want to share a preview to episode 2 of The Love Doctor. Because I think like if I don't get kissed, then that was like a failure of a date. And that's probably not the right way to look at it. Probably not how everyone looks at it, but that's my take. Well, I would say that... Um, for me, kissing on the first date, it would just depend on the situation. If it feels right, then it is right. If it feels wrong, then you probably shouldn't go through with it. And to the uh, <laughs> first kiss, I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. You gotta know, you know, you gotta see the signs coming off. You gotta read each other. It should be, you know, hinted a little bit if it's mm -hmm. gonna lead to that. And if it doesn't, oh well. <laughs> the hug can be the worst part of it. it. it I really mean, can we got be. the the above head, you know. I'll keep you warm hug because you're too tall for the person and they go in low right. for that linebacker pickup hug. Or you do the too We're tight dying. around. Or your heads go the wrong yeah. ways. Yeah, oh, the hug could just yeah. be the worst. Or the just Tune into The Love Doctor with Michaela Hilgar on Charter's channel 983, our SPTV YouTube channel, or our website. 
Well, that's all we have for SPTV News this week. For more updates, make sure to check out our website. To learn more about what happens here at SPTV, check out our social media pages. Tune in next week for more SPTV News. Good night, Stevens Point.